Well, I was with a friend of mine. He, he was a scientist, and he was filming UFOs all up in Pine Bush. He made Pine Bush famous. Pine Bush was the number one UFO spot in the United States for many years. Uh, and then he did work for, for the uh, Montauk Project, and he had to find the energy location of the, of the porthole vortex. Now, well, Pine Bush, New York, was a porthole because there's army ba- alien army bases there. Wanakew is, is owned by the government. And where we went, it was government property. Then you go to Long Island, uh, Montauk, Long Island, which where they said they last the other part of that base up. Now, I'll be able to President Nichols. President Nichols went in there after it was closed up and everything. But uh, what they talk about, and I can't think of the other name that Janet talks about, the guy that was one of the speakers at their, his, her conference, uh, he talks a lot about it. Uh, but we can debate someday if he wants to talk about what he said about Wanakew. Wanakew is an evil, negative place, the same as Wanakew is the most powerful energy on this planet. Anybody that walks there that we brought there, it's government land, so we have to sneak in. The signs say if you get caught on this property, you will be shot. But when we brought people there, people kind of went crazy, lost it. We brought the, the, the crystal skull there, the person that goes around the United States with the crystal skull. Uh, we brought a couple other big famous names there. Uh, and they kind of went out after that. They they started, they stopped going public. They stopped doing a lot of things. Because it, if you're not protected, the energy, when you walk, these clouds follow you. These balls of clouds follow you wherever you walk. Everywhere you look in the distance, you see these red eyes staring at you. There's, there's these blue bats that have these glowing eyes that fly all around. And plus you'll get to hear things that you could not imagine like dragons screaming and flying and, and everything else under the sun. We got a, we got a dragon So what footprint. do you think it is, some kind of land that's on this planet that's not here or another dimension? Or what was your perception it's, or filter? What did you think okay. it was? Well, Sounds here's, like a scary let me tell you how it was, Well, <laughs> here's how it was created. All right. When, when they were playing with the Philadelphia Experiment, and here's when the rip happened. Now, they talk about the rip. If you watch the movie, The Philadelphia Experiment, and everything else, they had the Eldridge, and it was on the ocean, and they turned it on, and suddenly the ship disappeared. Well, going back and forth in time, which they did, they ripped that vortex of the time barrier, and it created a new vortex, which is what is allowing all these things that shouldn't be on planet Earth here which people don't deal with, demons, entities, creatures. Well, that's not real. That's not, one here and there, like Bigfoot, and not not Bigfoot, but like uh, the Koopa Chopper monster and, and the, the Mothman and all those other kind of words. All those creatures came out of it. And it happened in one split second. But it happens every 20 years that vortex opens greatly. And that's when the whole West Coast went into blackout because I think it's a 20-year cycle. And when it comes back to that cycle, on that day, that vortex opens and, like, spits things out. Uh, the government was trying to close it. The whole Montauk project, they were trying to close that vortex. And I remember I mentioned a friend of mine, ex-friend of mine, John Ford. Uh, John Edmonds, sorry, not John Ford. John Ford's in, in the nut house right now. John Edmonds. He has, a, he has a vortex or a porthole on his property. I brought Kerry Cassidy there. And she knew right where it was. She walked in and said, this is where the vortex is. And uh, she filmed the ship right over the house that night. Uh, but there's all kinds of creatures and entities coming out. I mean, his wife was supposedly raped by aliens. And, uh, but when I was there, I saw multiple things in one week. So they're not good. And when government says we're going to go through a portal, where do you think you're going to go? I mean, it's like saying we're going to take a ship to heaven. Or we're going to meet God if we go through the stronghold. Well, just tell us what you, do, what you experienced, Tommy. I mean, I want to know what you experienced from those clouds because that's a different thing. And you were there, and you met uh, Brian Williams. And what age were you? Well, in? well okay. I was, we get off not track. Too long ago. It, was a, it was in the past 20 years I met Brian. I was with, uh, I'll say his name, Bruce Cornett. He's a scientist. He was doing all this UFO stuff way back then, and he was framed for sex crimes and put in jail a couple years ago. Uh, He got out. Uh, He's doing a lot of stuff again. But uh, I met him. 
he was supposed to do a TV show. And he says he couldn't make it, so he let me do the TV show for him. And then he says, well, we're supposed to go see Brian. And then that's when I met Brian. Now, Brian, when I met him, he, he, he was, uh, I hate to say, like a high-powered witch uh, in his right. Uh, he had the pentagram on the floor and all these things when I met with him. And when I went in there, it was like a battle between him and my, me as energies. And he goes, who are you? Because I picked up his staff. He says, don't touch that. You'll die. And then I walk inside the pentagram. And he says, who are you? And then that's when we made friends. Uh, he worked for the government. He did readings for the government. He worked every, he did a lot of things. Uh, but when he got involved, with, he, was in, he lived up in Wanakew. His house was right next to the property. So we could just walk there because you couldn't park there. The police patrolled that all the time. So we used to get dressed up and walk into this vortex. Now, the second you walk past the bridge, which is the bridge that they flooded the city for, once you walk past that, you're walking into the vortex. I just got chills, just like that. The energy wow. there. Hits you. Is it clouds? Is it's that like, where the kind of, clouds are? The strange. Well, you know, the clouds I, I don't are know if you all around you. Aliens or energy or no, no, you're, from another you're place in space. Form. Okay. You, know, you have all tell I people the name body. of your show. It's called Into the Strange, isn't it? And you talk about my all show this. is called. I talk about a lot of different things, but I try to keep it spiritual because Sergio 18 and I lectured for a couple of years around the United States for global sciences, and we met everybody. Uh-huh. I'm going to have a couple of famous people on my show that I consider that I met personally and I work with, but uh, not too many people do I promote because I only want to promote spiritual things right now because the whole UFO world is taking us to a different level. But when I met him, and uh, we were lecturing. He would talk about the UFOs, the aliens, and, and the vortex. I would talk about spiritualism and what aliens are trying to do and everything else. So we had a, a, a we always had a great following. Everywhere, every conference we did, everybody would be on top in our conference, no matter what. We stayed at the place for a week, and we were taking people out at nighttime, filming orbs and things like that. Because we, we were the first people in the United States to go public filming orbs. And we said we can film anywhere we are, anytime. Because they're aliens, they're ships, they're dimensional beings, they're everywhere. And they're here. And they all work at different levels. And we put out charts with the different kind of orbs. And now he's like being attacked. Well, they're not orbs. And well, mine are. Orbs. Well, they shoot a picture of uh, steam in the air and things, and you get thousands of bubbles. And now look at all these orbs. No, it's a refraction of the light. That's all it is. So proving an orb is real and not is another thing. Proving uh, what they are is another thing. And how much it affects the human race, they don't really interfere in general. But uh, when I was up there and you walk into this cloud, it moves with you. You could walk this way, it'll come that way. You walk that way, they, these clouds just follow you. But then when you get to certain spots, it, the energy increases where it kind of like feels you're like in a fire and your body's burning. Uh, not not like in a real fire, but you can feel the heat and the energy going through your body. And it's kind of like sucking your energy. But I was always protected. Uh, I mean, we've set crystals up, crystal balls and spheres and put lights on them. And then, the, then all these things would come out of the, out of the sky, out of the, out, of the, out of the trees. Now, even the Hershey monkey, which was out of the Montauk Project, was supposed to be an entity that they created. I saw it. I saw it jump into a tree. I mean a solid tree. It just jumped into it and went into the tree. I was chasing it. Uh, so there's, it was the same, same day, the day after I met, I saw the Bigfoot up in Monaco. So these things are there. Uh, they're all over the place. And I, my whole experience with the Bigfoot is bizarre, bizarre because Monaco, New Jersey, there's lots of wolves up there. But you don't see them. You don't hear them. We walk through the snow all the time. We saw footprints. We never heard them. But the night that I saw Bigfoot, every wolf that you could possibly imagine was howling right after I saw it. So I really feel the wolves were chasing Bigfoot, and I heard the story now that the wolves do follow them. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff that revolved around Wanaku. But Wanaku, if you go to the libraries and go to the, go to the places where anything was documented, the police documented all the UFO sightings. They documented that the Army was stationed there for nine months watching the ships going in and out of the reservoir 
where they just flooded the city, uh, but nobody talks about what was happening during that time frame. Why were they doing it? Why did they go after these, this, this city that was underwater now? So when I was on a, about back at the Vortex, I, I got a picture. I just put it up. Uh, a little teeny ship came flying right in front of me. And then there was some kind of entity running down the river. It was just splash, splash, splash. Three giant orbs were chasing it. And then these other two little square ships came flying across. I got a perfect picture of that. So we got pictures of things that nobody ever even witnessed, never mind actually have an actual photograph. None of the pictures we shot were created by Photoshop or Print Shop or any kind of company that has a program that tears apart a picture and rearranges it. Uh, we sent well, over a what period a, of time, if you don't mind me asking. This what was from 97, was 1997 to 2000. That 96, well, well, well it started in 96 because we did Strange Universe. Sergio and I were on it. They cut me out. Most of everything I said, they cut everything out. I'm out you only see me for a couple seconds. But they did put uh, Sergio's video because I was talking about Native people. And the government doesn't allow anything native to come out to the public, period. Because uh, up at Wanakew, now this is something people don't know. The head of the Chippewa Nation, uh, Jaguar Priest, and, and three elders from Canada were all given visions to come there. And they came. And we met with them. We took them into the vortex. And they said, there's no spirits here anymore. I said, no, I freed them all. And uh, it was just an incredible thing because they were told that they had to go there to do work there. And when they got there, they said, all these souls are gone. I said, well, I have pictures. I'll show you pictures of what we do and how we do it and why I freed all these spirits. Uh, and then that one Well, you sound like a totally different on... person back then because, you know, you said that you just oh. wanted to talk about spirituality, but that you have this interesting past in Wanaku, New Jersey, in this place that had – Cloud or beings with red eyes? Cloud yes. people? We spent <laughs> three years. Paper people? Three years. Three years. We went there every other night. We spent four to six hours taking pictures from anywhere from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning. We shot at least a 1,000 pictures every night. When we first went, I was using photo film, which was so expensive. And a lot of times we go to the to the print shop, uh, the, to the photo place, and go. We don't. We, we can't develop these. These are all. I said, develop every picture, no matter what, because he 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 saw blurs and he saw images, and he says, well, this isn't right. So I said, no, you have to develop every. But when you develop four rolls of film, two or three times a week, it was too expensive. That's when digital cameras came out. I bought. I swapped my camera for a digital camera. We went out there, and that's when we filmed that first orb. Uh, and crystal clear, and then we started doing digital rather than photo because it's just so much cheaper. Because on digital, you could shoot 2,000 pictures and just delete them. I mean, it's not you have to pay to develop them. So uh, in the interim, while I was up there, getting back to the to the energy that's there and the beings, the dragon a dragon flew over us, and there's no way you could describe it except maybe a hundred foot bird flapping its wings over you, and it went boom boom. Boom, 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 like that. And then Brian's screaming. He goes, take out your cameras. Just keep shooting, keep shooting. So we're all shooting pictures. And then all of a sudden we hear it screaming. And I could do it over the phone, but it would scre- It would hurt your ears. It was so loud. It was like, <laughs> like that, but real loud. And it, was, and it was doing that. And we were following it. So let's keep following it. And all of a sudden it landed. And all these rocks fell down. And the next morning we went there, its print was like right in the ground. The whole floor print was, real big print was right in the ground. We did get a picture of that. Uh, but it was, we had six people with us. They all heard it. Uh, and they were all running around crazy, uh, trying to find it, trying to see it. But it, it was invisible. A lot of the creatures there are invisible. Brian came out with a technique that people don't think is real. It's called the breath technique. And what you do, you take smoke and you breathe into the air. Any beings, interdimensional beings, when they get caught in that mist, when you hit it with light, reflects the image in it. So that's how we started getting all these images of creatures and, and weird cre- fish flying through the air, four-foot mushrooms, and all kinds of beings. But we got a picture of a little alien standing on the ground, real little, uh, crystal clear. 
So we got, he has so much evidence and he copyrighted all the 